This passage is adapted from Stephen Pan, A Touch to Remember. When you grasp or brush against an object, anything from an outstretched hand to a leather bound book, you're physically as close to it as you can possibly be. At that moment, specialized skin cells convey a wealth of information such as shape, texture, size, and weight. Yet when you stop touching that object, much of that information appears to fade away rather quickly. After a few days, you may only be able to bring a vague impression to mind. It would seem then that the sense of touch is largely useful in the moment and not, not much after that. Over the decades, there has been surprisingly little research to test that assumption. Yet a common perspective is that the sense of touch is by far of limited use over the long term, and especially when compared to the visual system. However, a new study by Fabian Hamacher and Christoph uh, Kabanda, researchers at the University of Regensburg, provides the strongest challenge yet to that perspective. They're finding the sense of touch generates memories that are far more complex and long-lasting than previously thought. In the study's first experiment, blindfolded participants haptically explored over 150 household objects for one hour. This involved them picking up and touching a series of kitchen utensils, stationary goods, and other items. They studied each object with their hands for 10 seconds each. Next, while remaining blindfolded, each participant completed a memory test. On this test, two nearly identical versions of each object were successfully, successively held. For instance, two dinner spoons. Only one of each had been presented before and participants had to determine which. When the memory test occurred just after the study period, participants chose the correct object correctly 94% of the time. Just briefly touching an object enabled them to distinguish it with another perfect, uh, another uh, to distinguish it with almost perfect accuracy. Given the challenge of memorizing the many details that may differentiate an object from another, such as the curve of a spoon handle or its overall length, and the fact that hundreds of items were touched in a short period of time, that outcome is no small feat, yet human beings can accomplish this with relative ease. Just as impressively, when the memory test occurred a week later, very little had been forgotten. Thus, not only does touch generate memories that are highly detailed and precise, but those memories can endure over the long term. A second experiment was even more startling. This time, a new group of blindfolded participants explored the same objects by touch. Rather than carefully study, they simply rated how pleasant each object felt. There was no intentional effort to memorize. A surprise memory test occurring one week later was designed to be more difficult. Participants were no longer blindfolded and had to visually identify which of two nearly identical objects they had touched before and without having previously seen either or having another opportunity to touch. Yet the accuracy rate remained high, even when participants felt unsure and had to guess, they still identified the correct object more often than not. It would appear then that the cognitive capa capacities of touch, which was among the first of the sensory systems to evolve, have long been underestimated. Contrary to the view that it is only useful in real time, touch leaves a memory trace that persists long after the physical sensation is gone. Moreover, information appears to be stored without much conscious awareness. As a result, those memories can manifest in interesting ways. For example, you may not be able to verbalize how something felt, but you will be able to recognize it by grasping it or looking at it. Okay. It can most reasonably be inferred from the passage that the objects used in Hermacher and Kambander's experiments uh, possessed individually distinct physical characteristics, tended to evoke pleasure in those who touch them, are unlikely to be routinely encountered in daily life, had been determined by other researchers to be especially uh, memorable. Okay, let's work with the line numbers. Uh, let me just open this. Uh, question, yeah, 23, 27, 35, 37, 23 to 27, 35 to 37, uh, 37, 39, 39, 44, 
37, 39, 39 to 44. Okay, so we are looking at the characteristics of these objects. Um, in the study's first experiment, blindfolded participants haptically explored, explored 150 household objects. This involved them picking up and touching a series of kitchen utensils. So these were familiar items, right? So I think, uh, so the C is wrong. These were not items that they would not encounter. Okay. And then uh, when the memory test occurred just after the study period, participants chose the correct object correctly. Just briefly touching an object enabled it, them to distinguish it with almost perfect accuracy. Given the challenge of memorizing that, the many details that differentiate an object from another and the fact that outcome is no small feat. Okay, so I think the... Uh, I think that I, so I'm, I'm going with elimination. I don't, I don't think the idea was to evoke pleasure or to be memorable. I think the idea was that, um, that these objects would individually be distinct, right? And that uh, comes from this. Uh, one second, the study's first experiment, they explored over 150. Yeah, and when the memory test occurred. So this can't be B because that just gives you the result. Uh, the fact that hundreds of items were touched, that outcome, okay. I would go with D in this case because the many details that may differentiate an object from another, right? So the obviously they were physically uh, you know, they were individually distinct. So D supports that. As used in line 45, relative most nearly means uh, relative ease. Yet they were able to do this with relative ease, with comparative ease, right? So, I mean, if you think about it, it was not dependent, not appropriate. Because it would be like, it wasn't perfectly uh, easy, but it was relatively easy. It was comparatively easy. So that would make sense with option B. The sixth paragraph mainly serves to 51 to 64. This one, right? A second experiment was even more startling. And there was no intentional effort to memorize. Uh, accuracy rate remained high, right? Okay. Suggest that certain research results need to be confirmed. Describe a subsequent study that further probes a research question. Correct some previously overlooked shortcomings. Emphasize that research regarding touch has universal application. So this is B, right? This was the second study that they did. It was not to confirm the first one or to correct anything in the first term. And it's not to show that uh, touch has universal applications. As used in 54, simply most nearly means uh, they simply rated how pleasant each object was. Rather than carefully study, they simply rated, right? So they, uh, they only, right? That was the only thing they did. They didn't do any careful study. They only rated how uh, pleasant it was. According to the passage, an important difference between the memory test in the first and second experiment is that in the second experiment, the memory test was unexpected by the participants because it was a surprise, right? Allowed participants to discuss their responses, was administered immediately after participants? No, so it wasn't Im administered immediately. Uh, and it did not permit participants to touch objects a second time. It was unexpected because that memory test wasn't. Uh, something that they knew about. It can most reasonably be inferred from the passage that the author believes that Hutchmacher and uh, Cabander's research underscores a potential connect between memories and feelings of pressure, verbal expression and tactile sensation, initial impression and long-term memory, physical proximity and available information. 
Okay, so let's mark the line numbers first. Um, let me change the color for this. So there is 48, 50, 53, 55. 48, 50, uh, 53 to 55, uh, 65 to 67, to 67, and 73 to 76, 73 to 76. Okay, so what was it that they were trying? Not only does that generate memories that are highly detailed and precise, those memories can endure over the long term. Uh, okay, let me open the option separately. So memories and feelings of pleasure, verbal expression, initial impressions, and long-term memory. I'm looking at C. I like C uh, for this. Rather than carefully study, they simply rated how pleasant each object felt. Yeah, so this doesn't tell me what they were trying to achieve. It would appear then that the cognitive capacities have long been underestimated. These memories can manifest in interesting ways. You may not be able to verbalize, but you will be able to recognize it. Yeah, so that is, uh, no, so, okay, let's go back to the options now. So the last option is not really supporting B because we are not looking at a, uh, expression oh a possible disconnect okay yeah so then it would be b then right uh yeah okay so a um uh, option a of 18 shows a connect with option c of 17 right but we are looking at disconnect so it would be b and d because there is a you may not be able to verbalize it but you do feel it Right, so that's the right answer. Okay, 19, uh, let me just uh, pull up the figure. Okay, um, according to figure one, in the first experiment, one week after studying the objects, the participants could correctly identify them by touch approximately which percentage of the time. Uh, in the first experiment, one week after studying, they between 80 and 90 percent, right? Uh, yeah. According to figure two, the mean accuracy of participants who said they guessed when visually identifying objects was slightly. Okay. Uh, okay, who guessed when identifying visually was slightly greater than 60%, right? Option A, 21, which statement about trends in the identification of objects can be supported by the data in figure two? Okay, the lower the confidence level of participants, one second, I'll just open this. Yeah. Uh, the lower the confidence level of participants, the greater their mean accuracy in identifying objects by touch, but not in identifying objects visually. The Okay, so the lower the confidence level, okay. The lower the confidence level of participants, the greater the mean accuracy, mean accuracy. Okay. Uh, High confidence. Okay, no, let me look at other options. The higher the confidence level of participants, uh, the more accurately pa participants identify objects visually, uh, the less accurately they identify them by touch. No, so C is definitely not true. And the more likely participants are to guess, the more accurately they identify objects both by touch and visually. Uh, the more likely participants are to guess, the more accurately they identify. No, it's not D either. That's not supported by the passage. Okay, the lower the confidence level of participants, uh, 
the greater their mean accuracy no that's not true yeah it's b the greater the higher the confidence level the greater their mean accuracy by both yeah so it's b okay let's grade this starting from 11 hmm. reading 11 a d b b d a d b b d 16 uh, 16 is a b d c a b a b d c a b 